Playing with Cadenza is easy. This video shows you how to get started using version 1.3 for the iPad. Here are the steps. First, choose a piece from our library and open it. Next, check your audio if necessary. Pick your starting point and play for as long as you like. Finally, save your recording and listen to it. Now let's see how this all works. This is the library screen where you pick your music. We're always adding new pieces, so hit the cloud icon to make sure your library is up to date. You'll see there are filters at the top for instruments, difficulty levels, and types of music. There's also a text box where you can search. Here, let's find the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Tap on it to download. Tap again to open it up, and you're ready to play. Cadenza works best if there is some distance between the mic and the speakers, so it hears mostly your playing and not its own accompaniment. It's fine to use your device's built-in mic, but if you do, the built-in speaker may be too close to the mic. We recommend that you use external speakers or headphones. If you use the built-in speakers or external ones, you can improve Cadenza's performance by turning on echo cancellation. This will mask out the app's own sound when it listens to you, so it can follow you better. Echo cancellation is in the settings panel, here. Cadenza supports some Bluetooth devices, such as Apple AirPods. If you are using Bluetooth earbuds or speakers, you'll need to compensate for latency, the extra time that it takes to process the Bluetooth audio. You do this by adjusting the accompaniment timing slider, which is here. You may have to experiment to learn how much adjustment is right for your particular Bluetooth speakers. Finally, you may want to tune your instrument before you play. You can access tuning options in the tuning panel, here. Now, let's play. When your piece opens up, Cadenza's controls are hidden. You can show or hide them by tapping anywhere on the sheet music. You can practice starting anywhere. By default, Cadenza is set to begin at the beginning. A magenta oval marks the starting point. To change this, press on the point where you want to begin. We'll press on the node at the beginning of measure 35. You'll see a pop-up menu. Pick starting point and see that the oval now marks the note you've chosen. When you're ready to play, hit the record button at the bottom, and you'll see that the starting note flashes green. Once you start playing, the accompaniment will play with you. We'll show this now. When you're done, hit the button to stop recording and choose if you want to save. If you do, your session will appear in the My Takes panel. This panel has a list of all your saved sessions. To listen to any one, just tap on it and you will pull up the Take screen, which has features for listening, sharing, and training the app for each recording that you make. To check your intonation, turn on the intonation slider in the tuning panel at the bottom. It will color notes that are flat in blue and sharp notes in red. At the bottom there's also a mixer, so you can adjust the balance of the solo and accompaniment on the recording. If you've made a video recording, the mixer also lets you adjust the balance between the sheet music and the camera. To play back your recording, hit play. You can start from any point in the recording and jump around freely in the music by tapping.
To stop the playback, hit stop. If you like the way you played the piece you can train the app to remember what you did, so that it can anticipate what you will do the next time, and follow you better. Tap the train button at the top to train the app. Finally, you can share your recording with others by hitting the share button, which will pull up airdrop, email and other sharing options.